The M1 program has incurred a multi-billion dollar expense for U.S. taxpayers over a span of four decades. It is reported that the actual construction expenses of the Abrams tank often surpass the initially allocated budget. According to GAO report in 1991, during the July 1981 hearings held before the Subcommittee on International Trade, Finance and Security Economics within the Joint Economic Committee, the Army's Deputy Director for Weapons Systems indicated that the annual unit operating costs of the M1 and the M1A1 tanks, adjusted to constant fiscal year 1982 dollars, were $310,600 and $338,200 respectively. So what are the core factors contributing to the remarkably high costs of Abrams tanks? Number one, the M1 Abrams incorporates cutting edge technology. Over the years since the initial deployment of the Abrams tank, there have been significant advancements in various technologies, specifically in engine technology. The Honeywell AGT 1500 gas turbine engine, originally designed for aircraft, is currently used to propel the M1 Abrams, boasting an impressive 1500 horsepower with a top speed of around 45 miles per hour. It stands as one of the most formidable main battle tank engines ever manufactured. Without a doubt, the use of what is essentially a jet engine in any main battle tank is undeniably impressive on several fronts. However, these developments have led to the excessive cost. In 2007, the Army initiated the Total Integrated Engine Revitalization Program for the AGT 1500 engine, focusing on enhancing reliability and durability rather than fuel efficiency. The Abrams jet engine consumes a substantial amount of fuel, requiring hundreds of gallons to operate. This is because the turbine engine must remain operational to provide power for the turret, lights, crew compartment heater, and various other electrical equipment. It is also important to note that the weight of the Abrams tank and its nuclear, biological, and chemical system have placed greater demands on the engine. It burns through fuel at a minimum rate of two gallons per mile, whether the tank is in motion or idling. This therefore sparks concerns that these rigorous fuel requirements could present significant logistical hurdles for the Army, along with high demand cost. Number two, the Abrams tanks require complex maintenance. Besides the fact that any main battle tank employing a jet engine costs extremely high due to the fuel consumption, it also introduces some additional challenges for the dedicated crew responsible for their maintenance, let alone the overall tank extensive repairs. For example, Abrams tanks necessitate semi-annual scheduled maintenance, which involves the removal and disassembly of the engine and transmission to replace the seals. It demands a specific set of skills, expertise, equipment, and training to properly service these formidable machines. Of course, acquiring and maintaining this expertise does not come without a cost. This is strengthened by the U.S. officials who elaborated that the Abrams tank necessitates complex maintenance, extensive logistical support, and specialized training, which add to the overall cost. Under Secretary of Defense Colin Call discussed the high cost, training complexities, and maintenance challenges during his discussions with journalists after his visit to Kiev in January. For these reasons, complexities of maintenance are among the factors driving increasing cost more than expected in the Abrams program with each passing year. Number three, massive production of the Abrams tanks. Despite the expectation that the Abrams tank might be a specialized, low-production item, the reality is quite different. In terms of military manufacturing, the M1 Abrams is akin to a widely produced commercial vehicle. According to Hot Cars, an estimated 7,500 or more M1 tanks have been manufactured, 
not solely for use by the U.S. military, but also for distribution to allied nations, including Egypt, Kuwait, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and Australia. This will likely lead to substantial cost overruns. The 2021 Congressional Budget Office reported that the projected total acquisition costs for the Army's ground combat vehicles are expected to average approximately $5 billion per year until 2050. This amount comprises $4.5 billion allocated for procurement and an additional $0.5 billion for research, development, test and evaluation. Over 40% of these projected acquisition costs for Army ground combat vehicles are allocated to Abrams tanks. Number four, the Abrams tanks come with extensive upgrades. The M1 Abrams has spawned numerous variants and upgraded models. This is because the Army has engaged in multiple remanufacturing and upgrading cycles of Abrams tanks since it initiated procurement in the late 1970s. For instance, 240 older M1A1 SA Abrams tanks have currently been incorporated into the newest Abrams tank production line. After undergoing enhancements that include increased electrical power, integrated protection against improvised explosive devices, a new auxiliary power unit, embedded training systems, and an ammunition data link, they emerge as M1A2 SEPV3 Abrams tanks. It is safe to assume that these advancements come at a considerable cost. As mentioned earlier, according to the Congressional Budget Office projections, over 40% of the total costs will be allocated to upgrading and remanufacturing Abrams tanks, and the projections indicate that procurement costs are anticipated to average approximately $1.9 billion per year. Despite facing cost overruns, the Army has taken steps to implement cost reduction efforts. According to Army data from its 1988 cost estimate for the Abrams, tank track expenses, T-156 track, accounted for 47% of the M1 tank's annual per-mile repair parts cost and 52% of the M1A1 tank's cost. To address this issue, the Army has developed a new tank track, the T-158 track, which was estimated to save approximately $297.9 million in operation and support costs over the 20-year lifespan of the tank fleet. However, it is important to note that the Army did not consider the potential consequences of the increased weight of the new track in its savings estimate. This increase could lead to higher fuel consumption and increased wear on road wheels and suspension components, potentially causing higher operation and support costs, and thus reducing the expected savings. So that's all the reasons behind the cost overruns in the Abrams program. If you have other opinions, let us know in the comment below. Thanks for watching.